Well, good evening and welcome to Catopia. Hopefully your Sunday night has been fantastic. I gotta admit, my Sunday night was really very, very good. So here's what I've been up to tonight. I got to enjoy a bonfire and s'mores and hot dogs with some good friends from our church. And it was just a beautiful, beautiful evening. It was beautiful weather, it was beautiful company. It was a fantastic night. So I sincerely hope that your Sunday night was half as good as mine. Because if that was the case, it's been a pretty good day. So here's what we are up to tonight. You might notice that I already have something on my canvas. So this is all dry. This was all acrylic and uh, some white gesso on here. So what I noticed immediately about this particular episode is that, well, Bob already started with pretty much a masterpiece before ever putting any oil paint on the canvas. So <clears throat> in my painting room, I have a Bob Ross calendar and most of the month I keep forgetting to like flip to the next month because March and April and May were one big blob blur that lasted approximately 200 years. Okay, so I finally got it switched over to May, somewhere like May 15 or something ridiculous. And the picture on it is just gorgeous. It's these bright greens and these bright blues. And I just knew I need to paint that. So here we are at the very last day of May and I've decided, hey, I'm gonna step out of order. I'm gonna paint that particular picture. So once I pull it up, <laughs> so here we are on YouTube with Bob and this is season 27, episode 12. I had to basically look through the entire twoinchbrush.com website to locate the episode uh, by its picture. And the title of it is Forest River. So obviously you can see the forest piece and um, we're just gonna get started with Bob and uh, take off and see where this goes today. If you're joining me on Facebook or on Twitch, I will be able to follow your comments. If you're joining me from YouTube, I don't catch those comments. It doesn't pull into my little chat bot. Um, but again, let me know if you have questions or you have comments. I'm happy to answer. Hi, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join us today because today we're gonna to have just a fantastic time. Let's start out and have run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us. While they're doing that, let me show you what's happening up here. I thought today I'd show you, show you how to use black, white, and gray gesso to make a fantastic effect. Now I've taken these three colors of gesso and using an old liner brush, one that I didn't care anything about, I've just made some little tree shapes. That's all there is to it. You just pull it down with a, with a liner brush, make a little limb here and there, and then take the liner brush sidewards and put in these little, little fluffy areas. It sort of looks like leaves. But that's really all there is to it. After it's totally dry, completely dry, I've covered the entire canvas with a very thin coat of liquid clear. Now clear is transparent, and you have a tendency to put too much of it on. If you have any doubt in your mind and you think you may have too much, take a paper towel and wipe your canvas down. What's left will be just right. Tell you what, listen. Okay, so liquid clear, that way anything that we put on here does not mix uh, in value, doesn't mix any colors, um, it will stay the true color. Now, I forgot about his little tip that if you think you have too much, because it can get out of hand fast, which I know, um, these are the paintings that once I get done, I have to take them down. I have to lay them flat, otherwise they, they run, like all the colors will run. So I feel like I've put a thin coat on here, but I also believe that, you know what, it's <laughs> thin is subjective and I think that that's quite a bit. So we obviously want the paint to move, which is why we need the liquid clear, because we want the paint to move. But you can see I have a hair on the, there we go, you got it. Um, want the paint to move, but it just, yeah, we don't want it to run. So I'm gonna go ahead and brush, get rid of that liquid clear, and then I think I will take a paper towel. Oh, and just lightly 
raise it. Okay. That way, I don't feel like we took off much, but just a little to change it up. Let's do it. This is a fun painting that anybody can do. This is a good one. If it's your first or second <laughs> painting, this is wonderful. And if you've painted before, this is one that will it'll certainly excite you. We'll start with a little phthalo blue. It's a beautiful, beautiful blue. I love it. I think it's one of the nicest colors that we have. Just put a little in the two-inch brush. Let's go up in here. There's not a lot of paint on the brush. And I'm just going to start and just make my little crisscross strokes, as usual, and paint right over this. And woo, fantastic things will happen. Look at that. Already, it looks like it looks like so the sky is showing right through the trees. And this is one of the neatest effects. And it's not limited to this. You can do anything with this gesso. There. And where the canvas is dark, I've used lighter gesso. And vice versa. Look at there. See, already we have a basic background in and done. Let's see, well, I got the blue on my brush. I'm going to add a little more of the Prussian blue because it's stronger. It'll go right over the top. And the corners, I'm going to darken a little with Prussian blue. Prussian blue is much stronger, much deeper. See there? There we go. Just the corners, though. And that, in turn, will make this look brighter. If you make this darker, this gets lighter. Now, we've got Prussian blue on the brush. I'll just sort of rub a little left right here on the canvas. And I know you can't see anything, but when we put a little color on there, beautiful things will happen. There. All right. Ready to wash the old brush? That's the fun part. That's the fun part. I think he puts blue all Let's the way down it. here. As you know, we wash our brushes with odorless paint thinner. Just scrub them off. Give it a good shake. <laughs> and cover the entire studio. That's really the fun part of it. Now, sometimes when you're walking in the woods, which I do quite frequently, and you look out and you see the... All right. So some of my blue tends to be a little lighter than his. Um, he got pretty aggressive with his blue, but... Here's what I know. I watched this episode, the whole thing earlier today. So I know that we're gonna put white in there. <laughs> so I left it kind of light to begin with. Um, I could add a little blue, I suppose. I don't know, I mean, it's, it's light blue, but. Oh, that got dark in a hurry. Hello. I guess that's is what it is. The light coming through, it's so bright, it just it burns right through the tree. Watch, watch. It's easier to show you. Take the brush. I'm just going to take one corner. Just one corner. It's a beautiful close-up there. One corner. And get a little titanium white on it. Now come up here. Decide where the sun's at back there, shining through all these trees. And very lightly, just begin that light area and begin working around. Notice that we're keeping that corner in the light spot. And we work around and around and around we go. There we are, see there? And begin blending outward. Now this paint is very opaque. We've used transparent color up until now. And now we're getting into opaque color. But that sun's burning through there. Light's just zinging right through. But by blending it out, it'll become transparent enough that you can still see the tree shape through there. And that's what we're trying to achieve. To me, that's what it looks like when I see the sun shining through. There. You can still make out the images of the trees in there, but they're washed out. The same as if you're looking at them in the woods and the sun shining through. Just like that. And we can blend a little light right on down through here. Up to you. Up to you. You decide where it lives. You decide. There. Now you can do this several times to achieve a desired lightness or a desired brightness. This is about all that I want. I just want that nice spot shining through there strong. I like that when that happens. Okay. 
actually, I just wanted to clean the brush again. All right, wearing this. Okay, I'm not super happy how this turned out because well, I washed the brush. And so my opaqueness is already disappearing. some big decision. What's happening here in our world? Let's take some black and some Prussian blue. I'll be right back. I can get a little crimson put in there too. Tell you what, maybe even a little sap green, a little brown, a little Van Dyke. Just all the dark colors. It doesn't matter. Okay, let's go up here. In my mind, I see back in here Maybe a little grassy area that lives right underneath these trees. So I'll just tap them a little dark. Don't need much because the black gesso is, is created most of it. We don't have to worry about it. Not like that. That's all we're looking for. There. Just let it disappear back in there. Okay. Same brush. We'll go right into some cat yellow, some yellow ochre. That's a hair of mine. Brush here. Right there. Tap it. Push it. Can't even blame that on the brushes. See that little ridge of paint right there? That's what we're looking <laughs> for. Let's go back up here. Now we can come back with this beautiful green color and just begin tapping in the indication of some little grassy areas that live far away. Far away. Very soft. Very soft. There. Just sneak them around some of those trees. There. Reload the brush as you need it. Very gently. All you do is barely touch the canvas. Color shows up. It seems like a hundred times better, stronger on a black canvas than it does on a white canvas. It's amazing what happens to color. There. Like wherever you want it to be. Wherever. Maybe, maybe a little, little projection that sticks out right there. Start going here. You decide. All right. Now, I'm going to grab another two inch brush. I have several of them. Make sure it's good and dry. Small amount of titanium white on it. Now, we put color on here, even though it doesn't it didn't look like it. There's a little bit of that blue that we put on. Very gently pull down. Don't put a lot of color on here. It shows up once again so bright. Very, very little white to do this. Very little. And it's important that you pull it straight down. Straight down. Okay. Then we go across. Just enough to make it look like a little watery area there. Now you could just as easily have painted those trees with a gesso in the water and reflected them. I think in the last series white. or series before, I sort of lose track of them. I think we've done that. And it's gorgeous. some dark. That was black and blue and oh, crimson, whatever. I want another one over here. I like that one so well. Look at here. We'll just put us another little little projection that comes right out through here. Oof, I got too much liquid clear. Dark color in there. I can tell. Okay, back into our yellow Indian yellow ochre cadmium yellow. Once in a while I hit a little bright red, believe it or not. Red will dull the color because red and green make brown. So every once in a while I hit a little bit of the bright red. And sometimes more to dull than to make things bright. There. Just begin forming this. Just begin working with it. Think about the lay of the band. Just 
just drop those little devils in there. They're everywhere. There. But isn't that just so, just, it's one of the most fantastic kind of ideas we've ever come up with. Thunder gessos are really wonderful. There. Don't know why we didn't do this a long time ago. It makes life so much easier when you're painting. And you can put things in like, like if you wanted to paint a little house or a building, you could do it all with the gesso. And then basically, all you need to do is just take it, put some clear over it, come back with a little color, and it's there that quick. Take a little bit of the, little bit of the titanium white. I'm gonna put a touch of reflection under here, just a touch, just a touch. I don't want a lot. I want to keep this pretty dark, so that Good light area grief. back here. All right, so really, she because I was a bonfire, I did shower and get this bonfire smell off of me but boy i i have found two of my own head hairs on this canvas tonight that's just well that's just unacceptable but already i can see right here it's running i i used too much liquid clear even though i you know tried to dampen it off so i'm not sure i don't know what the answer is guys Thicker paint, that's usually the answer, I'll be honest. Um, let me see. Alright, I think we're pulling more reflections. Shines. There we go. Not like it. And then once again, just go across. Just go across. That's all there is to it. Isn't that easy? I knew you'd like this one. I think it's one of my favorite paintings in the whole series. And it's so easy. It's great for people who are just beginning to paint and just beginning to experience the joy of painting. Hey, here's a commercial. Mm -hmm. All right, let's put some stones wow. in there. Oh, yeah. This is good put stuff. Some little stones. We'll take some, we'll take some black, little Van Dyke brown, put it in there. Just mix it up real good. A little dark sienna, too. What the heck? A little more do you see? Okay. Now I'm going to go over here and get some paint thinner. Mm. And I'm going to thin I got paint, paint on my pants again. Oh my gosh, I got paint all over my hand. I don't know where it came from. <laughs> um, Like, where does this even come from? I didn't put my hand in white, but I know. Mm. Oh boy. Camera down. Camera down. <laughs> I'm kind of in a tight space when I sit. When I'm seated, I have a little tighter tighter camera view, tighter everything. I just need to convince my husband to be my camera guy and then we would have a very dynamic show. I mean, I would be like a legit Bob Ross at that point. Okay. I was gonna look at something. I don't remember what it was. I hope Bob can help me fix it. Okay. So it's very thin. Remember our golden rule: a thin paint will stick to a thick paint. We'll okay, I don't remember what he's doing. Oh, I kind of wish I had left some open space here. I could probably make it dark and like it. And then once again, just go across. Just go across. That's all there is to it. Isn't that easy? I knew you'd like this one. I think it's one of my favorite paintings in the whole series. And it's so easy. It's great for people who are just beginning to paint and just beginning to experience the joy of painting. Hey, here's a commercial. All right, let's put some stones in there. Okay. We'll put some little stones. We'll take some, we'll take some black, a little Van Dyke brown, put it in there. Just mix it up real good. A little dark sienna too. What the heck? A little more of sienna. Okay. Now I'm gonna go over here and get some paint thinner. Okay. And I'm gonna thin this paint down until it's very thin. Remember our golden rule: a thin paint will stick to a thick paint. We'll thin that down. There. That's good. That's good. Let me clean the knife. We'll take some white. Uh, we'll use a little dark sienna, a little Van Dyke brown. Make a highlight color for the rocks. Hey, Mallory, welcome to the stream. That's good. It's not 
two I'm right. fighting with some liquid clear tonight. Do the same thing again. I'm going to thin this paint with a paint thinner. So it's pretty thin. Pretty thin. It's about the consistency of a soft face cream. Or soft face butter cream. Butter that you left out. You know, sometimes you leave the butter out. It gets real soft and gooey. That's what we're looking for. Okay, let me clean off my knife. About the same color? Now, probably what? the easiest way I've ever found of making very effective little stones is using a little filbert brush. Okay, let's go through the dark color first. Both sides. Okay, stay right there and I'll bring the light up. We have both sides full of dark. I'm going to take only one side and go through light. So Ooh, we this have is light, my filbert. Dark, light, dark. Now we can go back in here and you have to make big decisions. Where does all these little rocks and stones live in your world? Oh. Put a million of them in, or one or two. It's up to you. I like little stones, and this is the easiest way there is that I know of to put them in there. Maybe over here they're getting a little bigger, big old rock. But in one stroke, you can put the top and the bottom of the rock in that easy. Let's put some on the other side. We don't want any left out. There. Look at all those little rocks. I used to agonize over rocks trying to get them in there. Work myself to death. And you see how easy it is. If you want great big rocks, then use our little little oval brush. Why well, it just jumps right in there. I'm gonna take a little liner brush, a little bit of white, a little blue in it, a little halo blue in it. Mostly white. And instead of using the knife today, I'm just gonna take the liner brush. Just here and there, we can sort of work a little waterline right around the stones. I can. See there, you just let it wander around wherever you want it. Okay. Wherever you want it. It just cleans up the edge and the bottom of these little rocks. Hmm. There. See there, and they can come on out through here. There can be a few little things. You could do this with a knife if you want to. I thought today we'd just do it with a little wire brush, but you need a thin paint. Yeah, this is a little unusual for him. So Ooh. just zip right over there. There we go. Thanks. Things happened. Something like that. Oh. When you do yours, take your time and really, really do it nice. We're a little pressed for time here, so I have to do it a little quicker. But when you do it, just enjoy it. Enjoy it. All right. That's kind of, yeah. And again, if you don't like it, you just keep rubbing it. Foreground here. Okay, that's not actually I just working. Got brush. It's got a lot of dark on it. Like his rule is usually like, oh, if you don't like it, just keep rubbing till it goes away. I'm like, oh, it's just making it brighter. <laughs> hmm. Okay, Bob. Oh boy. I probably should have used the knife. I should have taken that sort of advice. Oh, look at that. I think the liquid clear is mixing with my paint thinner that sometimes is on my brush because I can't quite get mine as dry as he always gets his. And granted, he has multiple brushes, so he is he is very often using a new brush, a completely dry brush. Whereas I don't have that many brushes. Probably just need to buy more, obviously. Obs. Spend more on my hobby. Um, I remember where the story was going. I got distracted to spend more money, so that's what it is. Uh, but yeah, so I think that's partly what's happening is that all that liquid clear, even though it was a thin coat, um, is starting to mix with that paint thinner and it's just kind of running. We have blue and black and some brown. Let's see, sap green, lizard and crimson. Bravery test. Ooh, black and brown. Maybe an hour for Comes right across like that. Just tap it in. Fill it up. Fill it up. Dark stuff. A lot of good dark color in there. There. Well, he really takes yeah. out a lot of that blue. Okay. Let's go into our yellow. Same thing as we did before. We're just going to do the same basic thing. Get some green here. By taking that color we had on the brush and going into yellow automatically. 
just putting all kinds of little grassy areas back in here. There they go. There they go. If you just take your time and you keep tapping this, it'll get so smooth you almost can't believe it. There. Just little soft grassy areas. There they go. Right on out. There. A little more paint on the brush. Imagination on a piece of canvas can become reality. Can become reality. And sometimes we all need to escape from reality. Truth. But this is the place to do it. Bob. Everything, everything's peaceful mm. and quiet. That's what the world needs right now is more Bob. Not bad things here. Oh. These are happy places here. That almost hurts my heart. Like, if Bob could see what our world looks like today. I you know, I'm almost glad he's gone that he doesn't have to see this. He would be so, I think he would be so disappointed. But these are happy places. Nothing bad happens here. Ugh. Oh, okay. Bob. Bob was too good for this place. I mean, that's why he passed away when he was 52, 54. Hmm. Alright, well, now that I'm sufficiently depressed, let's proceed. Watch here, watch here, watch here. Sometimes, come right up in here. Sometimes it's fun to take the side brush, put it up here, and give it a little upward push. Watch. Bloop. See that little grassy area? Bloop, 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 bloop. That's all there is to it. You gotta make those noises or it doesn't work. There. Just like that. Maybe the grass Woo! over here is a little taller. And you work in layers. There. And we can go back to just tapping. I got it. You like his little loop loops. I get sneak feeling. There. When we were kids, my brother Jim and I, we used to run all through the woods in Florida. Shoot, we were tough. We didn't even wear shoes back yet. Probably because we didn't have any. Loop. More little grassy areas. There. Just as many as you want. You know what we need? Mm. You know, don't you? World we need peace. A tree. Oh, a tree. Also a tree. Let's <laughs> take some Van Dyke, a little dark sienna, mix them together with an old fan brush. And let's have a bravery test right now. <laughs> Here we go. I'm on a tree that lives right there. Oh, right through the pretty rocks. It's okay. We know they're back there. Just pull it through. I can't. Big, strong tree. Hey, Whitney, welcome to the stream. See, it just keeps growing. You can always make them bigger. Sometimes the sun is going to try to make them smaller. You can always make them bigger. Put a big old, big old foot on him out here so he has something to stand on. There. Anyway, let's just use a little filbert. We'll take a little white, a little brown, and just, just let that work right down the edge. That's too bright. Like that. I lost my filbert. Oh, there it is. Too bright. That's much better. <laughs> That's much better. Mm. See, if you don't like something, change it. In your world, you have that kind of power. and You can do anything. Anything. There. See, it gives the impression a whole rough, mean tree lives out here. There he is. We need some arms on our tree. We wipe that color off. Liner brush, there he is. A little paint thinner, a little Van Dyke brown. There we go. And in our world, there's an arm that lives on this tree. Right there. There he is. Got a few arms. Let's put some leaves on this tree so we don't have to put them. Well, Bob. Well, Bob. Okay. 
So we're putting some arms on this tree. Did we not give this tree a friend? Oh my word, he so rarely does just one tree. The tree doesn't have any friends. No world peace and no friends. Great, Bob. I'm not saying that my trees are getting better, but I think that sometimes my branches are getting better. I'm starting to understand that they need to be fatter <laughs> where they meet the tree. that is satisfactory. I'm not sure why I'm holding the brush like this, but you know what? It, it feels good and safe right now. <laughs> there's one that hangs off here that... Oh, there. Let's put a few leaves on there. We'll get a fan brush. Find that brush. Take some dark color. Black, blue. I get a little, little sap green and crimson in it, too. And our world, there it is. Push in a little dark first. There. Don't want to cover up all that trunk. Put some of it. I missed. Did you say black and blue or black and green? Take some dark color. Black and blue. Black and blue. I get a little, little sap green and crimson in it too. Okay. And our world. There it is. Push in a little dark first. There. Don't want to cover up all that trunk. Put some of it. Gives us an idea where some nice limbs are. We'll go right into the group yellow with that color since it had blue in it. We'll add it. Yeah, he mostly sticks around the top there, so. Mm hmm. Instant green. Oh, crap. I always wash the brush. Again. Sometimes we push down, sometimes upward. Let me get a little more color on here. It's up to you. That I kind of already have a bright. You. There it comes. See? Don't want to get too much of this in here. Just enough to make this whole tree stand out and sing in the sunshine. Right there. There it is. There. Okay. And yeah, we can take our old two inch brush right here and put a little grass around his foot. I'm still feeling crazy and I got a minute left. I like to do this because it, it upsets my director when we're getting low on time and I do something like maybe this old tree fell down. Oh. <laughs> tree fell down. This old tree just fell down. It was tired. You know, I still smell like bonfire. Old. I showered. <laughs> I can relate to that. I showered twice today, in fact. Uh, as I was reporting into my uh, worship team this morning, I'm like, you know. <clears throat> I'm showering every other day, and so let's all be thankful that Sunday is my shower day. <laughs> mm. Anyway, so I showered twice. Okay, so we're just dropping in a big old tree on the ground. Okay. Did I shave my legs? Um, I think I shaved my legs yesterday, actually. No, I shaved Friday. I, I must have. I probably did. <laughs> hey, time is not working the way that I think it should, so I can't remember. I'm going to say yes, I probably did. One of those times. A little highlight along his edge here. Just using a little brown and white. That was just Van Dyke brown we made him with, just like the one standing up. This one, this one he's laying down on the job. No one's going to know this he's is a tree. No one's gonna know this is a tree. Okay. I think you just use the fan brush here to give it a little, little highlight. Oh. That's okay. He had a long life. 
and now he wants to rest. We put a few old limbs that are still on here. So I'm coming out from the side and going out. There, if you have trouble making this slide, all you gotta do is just add a little more paint thinner to it. There, see old limbs are just, just, just hanging around out here. There we are. Going to a little bit of white and oh. brown. Make a hey, lighter Wiggy. color. And we can highlight those a little just so they stand out. Something like that. Hi, BB. There. This is not a good lap to jump there on. Your old trees just oh, laying out there asleep. Now then, let's go back and get our brush. It's got the dark color on it. I hope we're close to the end. I want a little, I want a little Hi, bush baby. living right here. So I'll put one in. Into your world. Yeah, so go that way. Anywhere you want them. Put some dark in. Go into a little bit of light. I'm going to use a, a little into the yellow ochre side a little touch. I don't think I have yellow ochre really all that much room for a bush, but. I'm not happy with Change it. Oh, that's better than I have here. Bob's going to try to make me put it in. There we go. Okay. There we go. All kinds of little things. Like that. See, you can put these in anywhere that you want them. Oh, yeah. I mean, like in my. Like Tree and then in my Just tree log. Like there's a little bush right here on the edge. Log. It goes right off the canvas. Happy little bush. I don't have room on my lap now, sweetheart. Back to our little liner brush. A little light brown color on it. And here and there and there. We can put in a stick or a twig. Whatever you think. Just a couple. rocks on the other side. Let me go back to my filbert. had rock color on it. And maybe over here there's a rock or two that lives on this side. Whoa, he is getting ahead of me. Okay, what did he do to this bush? I don't think it was quite that ochre-ish. Oh, what's that? I, want, I can't feel my left arm. I don't know if it's widget related. I hope I'm not having a heart attack. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> like, that kind of got me worried for a hot second. Okay. No heart attack that I know of. So that's kind of bright in the corner. We're going to have to back it up. I got distracted, which, I mean, happens easily, but I mean, it was easier to paint with her on my shoulders when she was um, two pounds, when she was only three months old. Now it's a little bit harder to paint with her on my shoulder. Back to our little liner brush, a little light brown color on it. And here and there and there, we can put in a stick or a twig. Light brown. Just a couple. I think he put some rocks in, didn't he? And we had rocks on the other side. We go back to my filbert. Had rock color on it. And maybe over here, there's a rock or two that lives on this side. I know that side's better, but all the rocks didn't move over there. There's still a couple here. Oh gosh! Well, she's what knocking stuff down. Right up against a tree. I guess she wanted to be on my. Where have you Shoulder. gone? You decide. There. Maybe right down here at the base of that big tree lives a little stone. You make the you make the decision, but he may live right there. That's okay. Shoot, I think we're going to go for a signature on this one. Take a little paint thinner, a little bit of the bright red, and we'll sign it. I have people write and say, do you have to sign with red? Absolutely not. You sign with any color that you want. I just sort of got in the habit of signing with red, and I, I always do it. It sort of becomes a trademark. <laughs> but you sign in any color that you want. 27 seasons in. There we are. He's not changing his trademark. Finished. Hope you've enjoyed it. I'd like to hear from you if you try this black and white and gray gesso because it does fantastic things from all of us here. I'd like to wish you a happy painting, and God bless, my friend. All right. So for starters, this is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, secondly, the way that he treated his trees, like up here, like 
he really treated them super, super well. Like, just knew exactly where to kind of cover up their feet. Um, and so sadly, I didn't do as good of a job as what he did. Uh, but by golly, this is a beautiful painting. Um, I gotta pull up my other, pull up my other screen. Oops, Bob disappeared probably for a little bit. Um, so this is kind of shining. Uh, yeah, it's catching the light a little too much. I put in new light bulbs and the light, the room's brighter now. <laughs> um, golly. This is a pretty good looking painting. <laughs> Doesn't look exactly like Bob's. His, a little, his is a little more polished than mine. He's got a slightly different landmass that curls around a little bit better there. But by golly. This is a gorgeous painting. This is definitely one where if someone were to request it, I would absolutely do it on a 16 by 20 canvas because, yeah, I think that could be... Yeah, just incredible. I mean, really, the way that it started, um, I know some of you might have tuned in later, the way that this painting started was just gorgeous. Um, he started with this black and white and gray masterpiece, really. Um, let's see if I can go back and pull that up. There it is. I mean, it just, how beautiful is that? <laughs> oh, so, all right. Well, thank you so much for joining me tonight. This was a beautiful Sunday night and a beautiful painting for a beautiful Sunday night. Um, I got to go to church today, which I've actually been at church most of this whole time um, running the stream behind the camera. Uh, today was the first day that I got to play guitar at church in 10 weeks, and it was amazing. It was better than I could have imagined. Um, I was so excited. I was so nervous. I went to the bathroom a whole bunch of times. Um, I have anxiety poops. Mm, that's just life sometimes. Um, but it was so good for my heart. We finished our first set and we, we left the stage through the side door and we, our worship team stopped and our worship leader just asked us, you know, Hey, you know, what do you need? Like what, what can we pray for? What do you need this morning? And I'm like, dude, that worshiping together, playing music together. Um, that was exactly what I needed for sure. That was something that I had sorely, sorely missed for the last 10 weeks. And so I was really thankful that we're back in the main auditorium. We have um, people still socially distanced, but we have people in the auditorium with us. And um, yeah, it was just so good. So they have it live streamed. Um, the full band is um, live streamed, although the mix is a little difficult to get right for live streaming purposes, but, um, my guitar really came through. It sounded great. Um, I had a gentleman who was at the bonfire tonight who asked me like, were you the one playing lead on glorious day? And I said, yeah, yeah, that's me. I play the, the little lead lick. And he said, wow, that you are really good at that song. <laughs> And I said, well, thank you. That's, that's always good to hear. Um, we play Glorious Day a lot. And um, I know when I first learned the song, it took me like two months to learn it because it is a hard song and it is fast. And we play it fast, really fast, faster. Um, but anyway, it was, yeah, just a really great, great day. And I look forward to many more. Okay, so that was a lot of rambling. Um, I'm going to post this picture here in just a little bit. I even took a picture of what mine looked like at the beginning before I painted it. So I'll uh, post kind of the first, I'll post the first look of it and then the, the finished look. So anyway, once again, I'm done. This is no longer part of the coronavirus collection. So it is the, the end of that. It's a new day, a new day collection. So if you're just tuning in, which I see one extra person just tuned in, I'm done now. <laughs> I finished. I finished the picture. Uh, anyway, this is definitely one of my all-time favorites. I want to try this one again. I can tell. 
All right. Well, once again, thanks for stopping by Catopia. I mean, this is a great channel, if you ask me. And I hope you have a wonderful Sunday night. God bless my friends.